one. In this world of multiple displays, lots and lots of pixels, it doesn't make sense anymore to work with a single input device, a mouse. You need something better. In fact, how are you going to talk about all of these pixels? Well, the way to do it is to call them by their real spatial names. The pixels exist in space. So you name them that way with x, y, z coordinates, and then every pixel is unique. That means, in turn, that you can point to them. And this is what you get as a result. Uh, if you visit our laboratory in Los Angeles, or Boston, or New York, or Barcelona, or Washington, DC, or London, you can see this. Uh, and I'm compelled to say, given the audience and the sophistication uh, here, uh, this is real for real. So the Minority Report stuff was synthesized, uh, created in post-production. This is actually working. So you see gestural control, you see pointing, you see navigation in two dimensions, which is a critical facility. You saw a few moments ago uh, the possibility of having more than one person interact with information at the same time. As soon as you step back from your lots and lots of pixels, there's both physical and social room for other people to work with you. Uh, you can reach out and grab virtual objects, move them around. You have kind of full visceral manual, literally manual, control over your world. Because this human hand, the human hand is the single greatest manipulatory instrument in the world. It's evolved over 100 million years to be the fine tool that it is. And when we use a mouse, we disable it. Right? So the idea is to drop the mouse, step back, and let hands do what they do so very well, which is to manipulate the world and understand the world. Navigation in three dimensions like this is a critical facility. If you can array information, whether it's literal or uh, figurative or abstract in 3D and then fly through it, you're accessing big chunks of brain that don't get exercised normally when we work with digital information. This is a specific application that we've uh, built to serve as the front end for the world's largest oil reservoir simulator. Uh, husbandry of that stuff, of course, is critical because until we get all of the alternative energies online, all we have is oil, so we better make sure that it lasts. Two, second principle, agency, and I have to correct or uh, specify the meaning of that word in this audience. Agency meaning efficacy, the power to affect results. Uh, we know we're getting something right as purveyors of a new UI when it feels exhilarating, when it feels amazing to use. There's passive exhilaration, and then there's active exhilaration, the kind that comes from causality, the kind that comes when you understand that you've changed the world in a positive way, that you've had some direct result, maybe through manipulation uh, using your own body. So this is a system we uh, built uh, as part of a commission from a museum, but it is really an illustration and a metaphor for the kind of fine-grained control every user, whether a uh, kind of media creation specialist or an end user, should have. So we have about 18 films in this system. You can reach into any one of them and pull individual elements out and put them down on a kind of personal composing table and move them around. Touch is fine sometimes. It's not what you want all the time, but touch is great when you need the friction of the surface to help guide your motions. You then go over to another film, pull out a different piece, plop that down on the table, and you start composing a kind of cinematic heresy that the original filmmakers certainly never intended. There's Jacques Tati, poor Mr. Tati. Um, so this is, again, as I say, a metaphor for the kind of control, the kind of efficacy we believe interfaces must give people in the future. We're today moving into a realm where there's less and less control because although these are fun, these little touch surfaces, they're not a step forward. They're a step to the side. They're an accessory. No one's going to perform surgery uh, or edit a film or create a piece of architecture on one of these or at least alone. So we need a new kind of user interface that's radically more effective, radically more capable. Three, this is a really interesting shift, and we're right at the beginning. No one can see it yet, but it's going to happen. Right now, we think in terms of devices. We think in terms of, is it this laptop? Is it that tablet? Is it a mainframe? Well, no one uses those anymore. Is it a phone? Information communications stop, as I've said, at the boundaries of those things, but that's an artificial uh, circumstance. What we care about are the pixels. The pixels are where the information is and where the UI resides. So it's not that we'll have no devices, but what we will care about is that we can use any collection of pixels for whatever purpose we deem. At Oblong, we say that our mission is to make it so that you can walk up to any display anywhere in the world and point at it, and by pointing at it, get through it. Here's an example that shows a little tiny piece of media running around five different screens being driven by three computers and three operating systems. Those OSs don't know about each other necessarily, but the application that runs on top of it, written in G-speak, uh, does. And it conforms all of the activity of this media in both time and space across all of this stuff. This is the future world that we need to design for and that we need to assume is coming into being. <laughs>